purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at purposely.com. Remember being a kid in the pool and you would shout these words constantly, Mom, look at me! Look what I can do! Belly flopping off the diving board, doing a handstand in the pool, swimming across the pool underwater. Or is that just me? I loved doing that. Welcome to the Bible for Busy People. I'm Erica, your host. And when I was a kid, I was an absolute fish in the pool. It's kind of fun this week to imagine the Lord saying to me and to you, look at me. Whatever you're going through, even if it feels like your hands are covering your face in despair and all you can feel is hurt in your heart, take your hands off your face and look at me. Look up. We're letting God lift our heads this week. So without further ado, I want to invite you to join me in Matthew chapter 14 because we're actually going to see Jesus look to someone in moments. For context, this is the day that John the Baptist, Jesus's cousin, the one who baptized Jesus. And remember the dove came down and the voice from heaven was heard that said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah, John was the one who baptized Jesus and that began his ministry. So you can imagine how hard of a day this was for Jesus, the day John was executed by King Herod. So Matthew 14, beginning in verse 13, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. I want to say here, Jesus, of course, was, is fully human, fully God. He felt all of the emotions that day. He was grieving. He needed that time away from people. And then he had such compassion on the people who came to see him that he healed everyone. It's beautiful. Verse 15 now, that evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. All right, let's back up the truck here to the person who gave the lunch, right? the five loaves of bread and two fish. In another gospel account, we hear that it's a little boy who gave up his lunch. So let's picture that boy. All he's got is not a lot, but in the hands of Jesus, it becomes everything that's needed, right? So today, if all you've got is a mustard seed of faith, the tiniest seed there is, I believe, give it to God. If you are walking through a storm and you are soaked to your spirit, all the way down to your spirit, and the lightning is flashing around you and the thunder is raging, just stop for a moment and look at God. Look to him and tell him, God, I only have this little bit of faith, this little bit of hope left, but in your hands, it's everything I need. Now, I want to flash forward. I like that better than fast forward to when Jesus took the loaves and the fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Again, Jesus being our example, he took what was placed in his hands and presented it to the father. And look what happened. That little bit of hope and faith can be multiplied to the people around you. When you walk in faith instead of despair, other people are going to notice and your hope and faith will multiply when you give them to Jesus. When you look at him and say, this is what I've got. All right. Let's move on, because this was a very eventful day in the life of our Lord and the people who followed him. Verse 22 now, so immediately after Jesus fed the 5,000 men plus women and children, could have been double 5,000, right? Who knows? Immediately after this, 
Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Are you with me in thinking that maybe Jesus needed more time with his father? What does it tell you and me when we get busy even doing the good that God has caused us to do and called us to do that we need time with the Lord? We need to get away by ourselves, even if it's for five and 10 minutes to settle our souls. Okay, verse 24 now. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land. That's key, far away from land. For a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, Don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. All right, let's go back to Peter when he went over the side of the boat, which took a tremendous amount of faith and started walking on the water toward Jesus. So I'm sure he's keeping Jesus right in his sight line. Then all of a sudden, it says he saw the strong wind and the waves and he was terrified and began to sink. What did he do? He took his eyes off Jesus and put his eyes on his circumstances. That's what you and I do too. Today, I want to encourage you right in this moment as the storm is raging all around you to stop and put your eyes back on Jesus. You can say to him, save me, Lord. I feel like I'm drowning in this situation, but I'm keeping my eyes on you and then get ready to worship because you are going to remember that no matter what, He is there. He has never left you and will never leave you. Until next time, you are loved. Thank you for listening to the Bible for Busy People. I really enjoy our time together studying God's Word, and I'd love to get to know you. If you ever want to connect, feel free to email me at erica at purposely.com. We're a growing community, and you are welcome here wherever you are in your faith walk. Maybe you're ready to say yes to Jesus and to accept His love and forgiveness. You'll be starting the best journey of your life, or maybe you need someone to pray for you. Check out our show notes for more encouragement. Behind every good thing, there are amazing people who are using their time and talents to make it happen. Thank you to the dream team that makes this podcast possible. Debbie, Donna, and Rebecca, y'all are not only rock star colleagues, but dear friends. I love y'all. The Bible for Busy People is one branch on a tree called Purposely, a podcast network designed to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose. And you are loved.